Today we are doing Azul Stained Glass of Centra, this time with audio. Place the scoreboard within the reach of everybody, and then give each player their palace board, eight of these pattern tiles, two score markers, and one glazer token in a color of their choosing. Okay, now players will choose whether to use the A side or the B side of the board as a whole, and then they will place their palace board face up with that side that has been chosen. Okay, they must do this as a group. And then we want to take these eight pattern tiles. We want to find one with these two gray squares on it, or diamonds, I guess. We want to make sure that is face down and then we want to randomize the other ones shuffle on this one in making sure it is still face down and then randomly place them above the palace board so that the chevrons lock in on each other here then we want to place our glazer token here above the further leftmost uh, pattern tile then we want to go up to the scoreboard, place our one score marker on zero, and another one here on the top space of the broken glass track. We want to return any unused player pieces to the box. They will not be used for the game. Next, we want to take a number of these factory tiles and place them in a circle in the center of the table. That number depends on the amount of players. For a two-player game, we'll use five of them, and then we'll add two for every uh, player we add on. So three-player, we add seven. At four players, we have nine. Return any unused ones to the uh, box. They will not be used. Next, place the uh, glass tower out where everybody can reach it. Inside should be the uh, the uh, glass tiles from the previous game. That's how it's stored in the box. What we want to do is go inside of there and grab one tile of each color. Okay, there's five colors. We want to grab one of each. Place them off to the side for now. And then we want to take the rest of the uh, glass tiles and place them in the uh, draw bag and give that a shake. Okay, next we want to draw one random tile from the draw bag and place it on the top space of the score track here. Now we want to take those five that we set aside. Remember, one of each color. We want to put them on our hands, you know, mix them up a little bit, and then drop one by one, placing them in the rest of the round track from this two space down. Next, we want to draw four tiles from the bag and place them on the factory discs until all of the factory discs have four tiles on them. So they're like this. Okay, and the final step for setup is to choose the first player. You could do this however you want to. I think the book says something about the last person to clean glass or something, windows or something. But regardless, you will give them this first player tile. And that is it. You are set to play Azul Stained Glass of Sintra, uh, which I will refer to simply as Azul. That's a long title. Okay, now before we move on, there's a couple different uh, rules for colorblind people let's go through them now during setup we placed out a number of these factory tiles depending on the amount of players on the back side of them there are sectors okay and each sector will show you what color belongs to that and there's also a symbol that corresponds to the color all right if we look at the uh, glass tiles in the center i don't know if the camera will pick this up there are symbols in each of the different color tiles i have a hard time seeing this i don't doubt the camera will pick it up um, maybe colorblind people can see it better i don't know but they have symbols on it which corresponds to the sectors in, on the uh, factory tiles. There are also spots on the pattern tiles that have the uh, symbols on them. Okay, so any glass tile space has the symbol on it, except for the wild symbol here, which is blank. Okay, so that could be any color. Does it not belong to a specific color? Okay, so during setup, while you're placing tiles on the factory, you want to match up the tile with the corresponding color for colorblind people. Now, if we look at the five discs here, they have the shaded sectors. That sh indicates what color is in the center. So we would place the corresponding tile on the right color and stack them for people. Whenever we move tiles into the center, we would put the color right in front of the corresponding cone in front of the sector so that colorblind people could differentiate them and during setup we would place a token coin whatever you want to use these are uh, geek picks for uh quacks over there that i got it from scotty um you get two of these doesn't matter what they are and place one 
next to the bonus tile for the corresponding round and one in front of the sector for the corresponding color. You could put it on, on the tile itself, but I think it would just get in the way once you start stacking. Um, I'm not colorblind, so I never played like this. Uh, and the camera picks all this up. It, it does havoc on the camera, so I, I played a game flipped over like this. I just want to go through this for colorblind people. Okay, but other than that, the gameplay is the same. Just you might have to help people out stacking tiles, and, and uh, with the uh, the bonus tile there for the, the specific round. All right, so we'll come back with how to play. Okay, Azul, whatever the rest of this is, is a uh, a tile drafting set collecting game in which players are trying to gain the most points by the end of six rounds. All right, now starting with the first player, players will choose to either draw tiles from the factory and place them on their uh, their pattern tiles down here, uh, adjusting the broken glass track accordingly, or move their glazer from one side of the board back to the left, and then um, scoring according to what they have done, and then there'll be a final scoring after six rounds, and whoever has the most points wins the game. Okay, so... Like I said, starting with the first player, players have a choice to either draw from the factory, whether it be one of these outer tiles here, or later on there will be tiles in the center. There's a couple rules with that. First, we will look at the, uh, the pattern tiles down here. If we can see, there's several different types here. We have some that are all one color, and then we have others that are multiple colors, two colors. Okay, and there is one in here that is slightly different this one here if we look at the tiles they represent a color of glass these tiles will be placed on our boards down here later on i'll show you that in a second in one of these spaces you can only have one piece of glass in each space and they must match the color with the exception of this one which are wilds which could be any color you choose to put it there if we look up top here it'll show us what's on the other side we'll be flipping these over throughout gameplay and we'll get into that in a little bit but up top here these symbols here will show that there will be four yellow and then one blue on the reverse side of this tile now this tile with the wild card must be placed face down during setup this is something i always forget all right so i figured i'd mention it again all right now as you can see, they hook on to this palace board here with, I, I'm calling them chevrons. I, I don't know what the, the exact term is. If we look down at the bottom here, we can see that there are numbers here, which is what we will score when we complete one of these pattern tiles. Between these pillars here, we have symbols here, which will correspond with endgame scoring if you are using the A side. And on the B side here, we do not have them. It works a little differently, but I think I showed the artwork. So each one of these spots here will correspond to completing the pattern tile above that spot, separated by these pillars on both sides of the palace board. Okay, and then if we look up here, we have the broken glass track, and this is the score round. All right, so getting back to a player's turn. Starting with the first player on their turn, like I said, they could choose from either one of these fa uh, glass factory tiles on the outside or in the center, which will happen later on. We're going to choose the set, the uh, one of the outside tiles for now. All right, so on that case, the first player will take the first player tile, placing that in the center, and then they will choose one of the factory tiles or the center and select all of the glass tiles of one color in that section of the factory okay so if i came over here say i wanted all the red i would take all the red and then place that near my player board for the time being and then take the rest of them that are on that tile and place them in the center now if i were to draw the from the center i would do the same thing i would draw all of one color from the center and then place them on my board in a second but if i happen to be the first player to take tiles from the center and the first player marker is there i would also take that and come over here to the broken glass track and move down one space on that track now once i've taken all the tiles of one color from either the center or one of the surrounding tiles in the factory i will then place them on my board the role of this is i could place them anywhere i want to to the right of the glazier or beneath the glazier i cannot place anything to the left of the glazier 
later on, as you'll see in a second, the glazer will be moving to the right of the board. Okay, so first I would take my glazer and then I would move them to a space that I wanted to place the tiles to. And this space must have tiles of the color that I want to choose. If I had taken more tiles than will fit in one row of the uh, pattern tile, which happens occasionally, any tiles that are extra that I cannot use, I will discard into the glass tower here and remove one point in the uh the broken glass track here for each tile that i could not place okay so if i had to discard one tile i would move down one space on the broken glass track if i had to discard two tiles i would move down two tiles on the broken glass track and so on and then discard all the tiles that i could not use now, if you have completed one of these pattern tiles, you would look at the tile itself and then look at the round marker, okay? Now, whatever tile in, is in the current round space, you would get one additional point if you had a matching tile on your board for that once you completed that pattern tile. So here, I have a red tile in the first round space. If I look down here at my pattern board, I have three red tiles. The blue player would gain three points. If they had four tiles or five tiles, they would gain four or five points. It's one point for every tile that corresponds to the round that you are on. Then we would take one of these tiles from the uh, pattern tile that you are working on and place it down here in the palace to represent that you have completed that pattern. You would then discard the rest of the tiles, placing them in the glass tower and either flip the tile if you have completed it once or remove the tile discarding it from the game if you have completed it twice leaving your glazer in the spot above the pattern tile that you just scored then you would score that pattern tile depending on the points listed down here on the bottom okay in this case we would get three points if we had completed it whether we complete it once or later on we complete it again we get three points just the one time. We would not get six points for this because we completed it twice. Just three points one time for each time you complete it. So we would give the blue player three points in this case. Then we would look to the right of what we just completed. And we would add points to anything that was completed next to it. So here, this one's completed. We've just finished it. We would get three points. We get additional two points for this one. And then we get an additional point for this one. And add that to our score. So we would add the additional three points to the three that we already scored in that example i just showed you so we give another three points for a total of six so that is your first option is to draw from the factory uh, again you can only place them to the right of the glazer never to the left okay now your second option is to move your glazer all right as you saw during the game we'll be placing tiles down here trying to work on them and we'll be moving the glazer as we go eventually he'll get to the far right of the uh, board he or she i don't know what your glazer is and then you can't do anything at some point you're going to have to move them back that's just what option b is you move them back to the furthest left tile of the uh, pattern tiles and then play would pass on to the next player now you cannot do that if your glazer is already on the left uh, side of the board, the furthest left tile. In that case, you must draw from the factory. Now, if you were the last person to draw from the center tiles you, and you have no other options, you cannot move your glazer to the left or anything like that. You must take all of the tiles in the center, even if it would give you, you know, negative points on this, this broken glass track. All right, so in this case here, we have the blue player, the last player, they have to take uh, tiles out of the center because they are already on the left side. They cannot move back to the left side. They have nowhere to place these uh, tiles on their board. So they would lose one, I keep calling it points, but a space on the glass, uh, broken glass track. It'll be turning the points later on during end scoring or during the game if you get to the bottom of this. But you would move one space down for every tile that you could not place and discard it 
throwing them in the, the glass tower. Anytime you discard, you would place the, the tiles in the glass tower. All right, so that'll continue until every player has taken a turn and the factory is empty. At which case you will then remove the current bonus tile for the, uh, the current round. Placing that into the glass tower. And then refill each of the factory tiles with four tiles. Whenever you run into a case where you run out of tiles in the draw bag and you're filling the factory, you would then take the glass tower and refill the draw bag and then continue placing tiles until you have four on each of the factory tiles. And then move on to the next round, uh, starting with the player who has the first player token. All right, but we would leave whatever tiles we did not score on our player board. And then this will continue until the sixth and final round. Once everybody has uh, taken their turn at the end of the sixth uh, round, we would go into a final scoring. The first thing players will do is add up any tiles that are left over on their player boards. And for every three tiles they have, they will get one point. So in this case here, the yellow player has six tiles seven tiles they would get two points over here the blue player has four tiles they would only get one point and then you'd get points accordingly then you would go down to your uh, palace board here and score that accordingly now the a board is a little different than the b side of the board with the a side of the board if you look here on the scoring part they tell you how it works what we want to do is look for these symbols here in between the pillars okay and that will give a point value for the tiles that you have placed around that okay and they were separated by the solid pillars here without that bonus symbol all right and depending on how many you have around that symbol will depend on the total points you get so if we look here we have four on this one we come up here the yellow player will get 10 points for having four then she has two here she get an additional three points she has one here that is worth zero points and then she has three here which is worth six points now the b side you want to look on your board and see what color is the most on your board. Which one has the majority? In this case, it's red. There's four reds. Then you would take that number and multiply it by the number of fully completed pattern tiles you have. Okay, so both the top and bottom section have to be covered by a glass tile in order for you to score that. So here we have four red tiles. We're going to multiply it by one, two, three three giving us 12 because these are completed we would not multiply it with this solo one here which actually should be up there or this one here and here okay so blue player would get 12 points bringing them up to 22 okay then we would look at this broken glass track and subtract any points if you are on a space that has negative points on it in this case the blue player is on the two space they would lose two points and that's it whoever has the most points wins if there is a tie whoever has the least points on the uh broken class track here wins and if there's still a tie you have to share the victory and that is how you play azul with a long title stay tuned for the gameplay okay let's play azul um let's see who goes first jen will be first uh jen Please yellow, I will be blue. Well, I'm both. I'm playing in my head by myself, but keep track of this. All right, so Jen's the first player. Oh, I forgot this. Let's do this. So Jen's the first player. Blue is the tile that will give us the bonus if we score this round. Um, so on Jen's turn, she could either draw from the factory or move her glazer to the leftmost spot, being that she is in the leftmost spot, she cannot do that. She must draw from the factory, being that there's none in the center. We're going to choose one of these, and then we're going to take all of one color, placing the rest in the center, and put whatever color we selected on our board. So let's see. Jen, uh, well, she's here. Blue is the first color. She's going to try this one here. She's going to grab these two blue tiles, placing them off to the side for now. Throwing the rest in the middle. And she will place it here and here. Again, one tile per space on the pattern board. And it must be in the space below or to the right of your glazer. And being she's the first player, she will place that in the center. Goes over to me. There's four blues. Now, I can wait until 
you know, and hope all the blues get pushed in the center, grab them all at once. I doubt that I haven't. We're both going for that extra point per tile if we finish something. But let's see what I can actually finish. So we got four yellow and a blue. I can do that one or this one. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'll go with this one. And I throw the rest in the center. Goes over to Jen. All right. So Jen needs two orange and blue. Uh, we got enough blue. She's going to grab these two orange. Throw the blue in the, in the red in the center. Goes over to me. Whoops, I forgot to move him. I'm sorry. I should have moved him before I placed these uh, to indicate which row I was working on. Uh, I just noticed I didn't move him. All right, so I need blue or yellow. I need two yellow, so I'm going to grab one blue, push in that other yellow in the center, and then hopefully I can grab it the next round. It's over to Jen. Jen needs a blue... To finish this, that's what she's going to do. She's going to finish this and score. Boom. Pushing the rest in the center. Now, I forgot to mention that. I'm going to play the B side. Jen will play the A side of the palace board so I can show the end scoring differences. But normally, you would all have the same side facing up. So Jen will come over here. She scored. She has finished this guy here. She will take one of her glass tiles and move it down to the palace board. It could be any color in case of the A side. In case of the B side, you want to pay attention. You're trying to get a majority color to score later on. Okay, so she's going to place the tile down here. This indicates she must flip over the board, so she will discard the rest of these tiles into the glass tower, then flip over the board, placing it back in her spot, keeping her glazer above that that row and then she will score four points because that's what's indicated at the bottom here and if there were anything complete to the right of that she would score that but there's only that so she has four points but she also had three tiles here which correspond to the bonus for the first round so she'd get four plus three equals seven points and then it goes over to me all right so i need two yellow i'm going to grab them from the center here Okay, but being that this first player tile is in there, I'm going to take that and have to move one space down on the broken glass track, which will be negative points if it ever gets down to 18. It'll be negative points during the game, and at the end of the game, wherever you land on that will be negative points at the end of end scoring. So, I'll grab these two yellow ones. I'm going to place them here and here. I completed this guy here, so being that I am on this this side i want to be careful on which one i choose i could either do blue or yellow it's early in this game so i could decide later on which minority i want to choose but i got at least two more yellows here if we look up here it'll tell you what's on the back side of the board so there's if i chose blue it'd be one two three four five i'd be able to use five of them whereas yellow i'd have one two three four five also huh. so it doesn't matter all right i'll just go with yellow for now discarding these gaining one point for that blue do that before i forget flip this guy over place it there and now i got a couple wow things to play with and I gained three points. Again, if anything were to write, I would gain that too, but there isn't, so three points. Back to Jen. All right, so Jen, come here. That's what she's going to do. She's going to try and get a couple more points off this blue one before it disappears. So she's going to come over here and then grab all the blue from the center and place them here and here. Back to me. So I can't score off of that. Yellow is coming up next. There's none out there. And then red. So I'll work on the red and the orange because they're coming out later. Uh, I could place it here. I'm going to save it. I'm going to come down here and place these three tiles here. Goes over to Jen. Jen's going to finish this guy off and score, which, if I were paying attention, I would have tried and blocked her from that. Although I couldn't have, uh, I could have placed them here, but I should have been paying more attention. Don't go by what I do here. The gameplay's not going to be 
agree. You know, I'm doing a lot of stuff here. All right, so Jen scored this one. So, again, she doesn't have to worry about color, so I'll just drop one here. Discard the rest of these. Gain two points for the blue because of the bonus, and then flip it. And then gain three points because of that. So, a total of five points goes back to me. Okay, so now I got a choice. I could either slide back here or grab these two and place them. Um, I, I will take these two. I was thinking about coming back here just to reset so I got options for the next round. Uh, but I'm not going to. I'm going to take these two and place them here. Now, I am able to place both of these, but if I had more than I could place legally somewhere on the board, then I would place as many as I can, discarding the rest, taking um, one slot down on the broken glass track for each tile that I had to discard. Okay, so I'm going to place them here. Again, moving him here to indicate that. And that is it. That is the end of the round. So, we discard this tile and place it into the uh, glass tower here and then we load these up again and continue starting with me because i got the first player marker round two i'm up i'll place this in the center and then we got the yellow up this getting another bonus i got plenty of yellow here but there's only five out there i doubt jen will let me get all of them so i would probably go for this one um i will grab some here i will grab this orange one place it here push these into the center over to jen okay so jen is over here uh yeah was behind there four out five out there she could finish this one or this one um now you know what she might as well she's going to work on this one here grab these two yellow over to me might as well finish it up yeah well, I'm here because if I do complete it, anytime I score anything to the left of it, it'll add a point every every time I score. So it'll add up eventually. Uh, so that's it. Over to Jen. While she's here, she might as well grab the blue. So she'll place that there. Rest go in the center. Back to me. I am here. I am not going to go in the center because I would lose points. So, I will grab that one, dump the rest in the center, score this one, back to the same thing, orange or clear, uh, so early, I'll just go with orange, or a clear rather, discard these, flip this, None of them match the, the bonus color, so I don't score points for that. But I do gain one point for completing it. Up to five whole points. Back to Jen. All right, so Jen's here. Oh, she's going to lose point. Or, you know, I thought to move down on the glass track. Because they're all in the center. She's going to have to do it twice. That's early in the game. She might as well. All right. One, two. She gained a point. <laughs> you know, even though she... She's going to lose a point. So this is an extra one. She can't place it in the spot she's working on. She will discard it. Lose one space on the glass, broken glass track. And then another one because she has the first player marker there. And it was first one drawn from the center. But she finishes this one. So she will score three points. One for the bonus. I'm sorry. I thought the blue was the bonus. She's going to score more than she lost on this. All right, so she lost two points, but she's gaining two points because she'll gain four for the bonus. We'll throw out the two. All right, so slide that down. She gains four points for that, and then two points for completing it. Total of four points. Two, four. Now we flip this guy over. Moves over to me. Okay, so I worked on this one last um i'm out of the yellow game red's coming up there's three red in there there's four orange you know what else i'll do i am going to reset my glazer go back to the left goes over to jen while she's here she might as well grab these three red
Back to me. I will take these. Move my glazer to indicate where I'm at. Back to Jen. Uh, you know what? Should grab these. They're clear for this, and then shift back eventually. See what comes up. Okay, back to me. I might as well finish off these two blue ones over here. That's the end around. We discard the scoring tile, and then refill the factory. Okay, Jen's up. Place this in the center, showing she was the first player. Uh, she's gonna grab these two clear. Might as well finish this off while she's here. Or no, wait, wait. Yeah, nah, she will. She won't finish this off to the next round now because she could score. So that's Jen's turn. Goes back to me. Uh, Red's up this with her. All right, I'm gonna grab these. Finish this guy off here. Over to Jen. Jen is going to shift back here. Again, I'm gonna save this to score the next round. And then, as we can see, there's a bunch of orange on the back side. So the next round after that, we can start working on the orange. Hopefully, we'll see. Back to me. I am going to finish this guy off. Oh, I forgot to push them in, didn't I? Yeah. Um, I'll take this, this one, yeah. All right, so I finished that one off. And unfortunately, I just can't decide on the color on this. <laughs> uh, red. Yeah, I guess we'll go with red. But I get three points for the bonus. And then two points for completing it. And another point for completing this one to the right of it. So that's another three points. I discard these guys here. Flip it over. And it goes over to Jen. Alright, so red's out. It's got a bunch of orange she could score next round. Ah, you know what? The blues are here. She's gonna grab all these blues. So she throw the orange in the center. She'll place it here. Goes back to me. Alright, you know what I'll do? I'll take the blue. I'll take the clear. I'll take the clear and place it here. Whoops. Pushing the rest into the center. Over to Jen. You know what? It is worth three points. And then every time she scores. Well, she already finished one, so that doesn't matter too much. She could finish this off right now. She'll hold off on that. She's going to move over here, though. She's going to grab these three blue. But she has to lose a space on the uh, broken glass track because of the first player marker. Goes over to me. Well, that screwed my plans up a little bit. Uh, but since I'm here, I will grab these yellow. Before I have to shift him back to the last, you know, the first uh, tile on the left. Back to Jen. Jen. The orange ain't going to help her. She don't want to take negative points. She got room for that, so she'll take this. Hoping I will take the orange. I will have to shift back instead of moving, you know, all the way over to get the orange. And she take too many there. She's just going to come over here, place the red one down here. Unfortunately, she couldn't score that one this round, which would have been nice. She would have got four points. Back to me. I have to take these because I shifted to the left. And I am going to place them here on the wild side here. On the wild card here. So I don't have to lose points. I'd only lose one, I think. But I keep saying lose points. It's dropping jet down on this broken glass track. And eventually you will lose points. Either at the end of the game or during the game. But that is the end of the round. We rinse and repeat. Okay, Jen's up. Let's see. We're looking for clear. She could score a ton of clear. Well, she's going to do that right now, actually. She's going to come over here, and she's going to grab an orange. Uh, she'll do this one. Throwing the rest in there. Throw down that one. She clears, scores this one, so one, two, three, four times. 
one is four, brings up to 20. We'll move uh, this one down, and then she gets another two points for completing it. And we discard these, and flip this guy over. Over to me. Oh, i put this in there. Over to me. All right. So clear. Oh, I can finish. Oh, no, I can't. I thought there was another one there. Um, so I would need red. Clear and red. But I'd have to lose a point to gain one. That doesn't make sense. Over here. I have no space for three of them. I can only take one. Oh, this is going to suck. But there's enough yellow. I think that's what I'll do. I'll go to the yellow. All right. So we're going to come over here and grab this guy here. Sliding the rest in. Goes over to Jen. Jen's going to shift. Oh, no, she want to grab a yellow. Nah, she's going to shift. All right. Back to me. I am going to take the first player. Losing a a slot on the track and then grab all of these yellow back to Jen. I don't know if it'd be worth grabbing all three of these and trying to actually she I she couldn't finish the yellow anyway. There's not enough out there. So let's see what she can score this round. She can score that. Ah, that's what she'll do. Alright. She'll come over here. Let's finish this guy here. Which will give her one extra point because of the bonus. Move that guy up. Place one of these down there. Discarding the rest. Flipping this guy over. And then she will score two, four, six more points. Over to me. Yeah, he's going to finish this guy off. Okay, so we get two points for the bonus. And then two, four, five points for the scoring. Two, four, five. Okay, now we got a choice clear or yellow. Um, a bunch of clear on the back side of this one and this one. And this one. Neither one will score me more points in the future, so that doesn't matter. I think I think I'll go with yellow. Discard these and whoops. Flip this guy over. Over there. Not score the or not nah, there's too many. So worth a point. She lose a point, get a point. Eh. Nah, I don't think that's worth it. She will do though, and she will come over here. Take all of these out of the center. Over to me. Possible I could score this. I'd lose a point. To gain a point, it'll be no. Yeah, that doesn't make sense, dude. I'll wait for the next round to score more points. Alright, so grab all the clear guys. Over to Jen. She will. Uh, she's going to have to shift, I think. Yeah. She'll grab more orange, you know what? She'll grab these two orange in the center. Goes back to me. I'm going to finish this guy off here. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come over here. Dump them in the center. Grab these two. And then I finish this guy. No additional points for this uh, scoring. But... I do score two points. And I'll use a yellow because I got a couple yellows out there. Discard these and flip this puppy over. Over to Jen. And Jen can either shift or take the red ones. She's not going to take the red ones. Get knocked down on that glass thing. So she's going to shift. Goes back to me. Uh, I'm going to shift. Which forces Jen to take these and get knocked down on the track. She's not too happy about that. One, two. All right. And that's the end of that round. We move on to the fourth round. Discarding that. All right. All right. So I ran out of, ran out of tiles. Had to refill it with the, uh, what was in the glass tower. I am up. See, we've got orange. We've got a ton of orange here to finish. So we're going to try to do it one at a time. All right. So first one. 
we're gonna grab this orange here. I'm sorry. We're gonna grab We're gonna put this in the center. Then we're gonna grab uh this red here. Moving on over there, placing these in the center. Now I score. Uh, all right, I'm hoping to get at least three orange out. So I'm going to go with orange on which one to choose to, to place down there. But I get one, two, three, four points for the bonus. Discard this and flip. And then I get three, six, eight, ten, eleven, thirteen points. So, and it goes over to Jen. Jen realizes there's not enough out there for her to do anything. She can only score a couple points here. All right, so there's not enough to finish this one. There's only four orange left. You know what? She'll do that. She'll come over here, grab these, place them there. Goes back to me. I am going to work on this one, obviously. Now, I think I want to start off the next round. Yeah, so I'll take this. Dropping me that one. And then grab this clear one here. Placing it there gives me opportunity for either one of the reds later on. Goes back to Jen. Jen is going to take one of these reds. <laughs> we'll place it here. Let's go in the center. And now she scores one, two, three, four points for the bonus. Places one down here, discards this. And because this is the second time she's completed this tile, she will remove it from the game and score two points for finishing it. Back to me. I am going to grab this red guy here. Oh, wait, is that what I'm going to do? If I do that, that'll give her enough yellow to complete this. Now, nah, she, I'm going to grab this. Whoop. Yeah, this one. All right. I'm going to place that guy here. So I get one, two, three points for this. Then I'm going to choose orange to show I have completed discarding these guys and the tile because it's the second time I've done this. All right, so I get three, five, seven, eight, ten points. Bring me down to 50. Over to Jen. She knows, uh, she knows I can't grab any yellow because I'll take, I'll go down that track. She's going to shift. She's going to come over here and then later on grab some yellows. All right, back to me. Okay, I got to do this orange once. Um too many clear on there all right so i'll shift over here and take this orange discard them in the center over to jen all right so jen sees what i'm doing <laughs> she's going out there she's going to hurt me she's going to mess with me she's just going to take this one i got here place it here over to me i did not like that all right so towards my plans for orange Blue's coming up. I'm going to fill this guy up here a little bit. So I'm going to move over there and grab one from the center. Back to Jen. Jen, she's going to come over here, take this, place it here, and shift the rest. Comes back to me. There's a bunch of stuff in the center I do not want. <laughs> um, Yeah, I'll grab the blue one. Hope for the best. Over to Jen. Well, Jen's going to finish this tile here. Alright. So, that will give her one, 
three point. Let me move this out of order. And then we discard these. Now we got one more round. It's getting close to the end of the game. Jen's goal here is to start filling up these guys around the center, around the center uh, icon here. You know, to try and score. If she gets all four, it'll be ten points. But at least if it's she gets three, it'll be six points per you know sector that she does. So she's gonna try and finish off. Whoops. This should not have been discarded. It should have been flipped. Sorry. So she's gonna try and finish these off. Um. So that she could get the additional points. Me, on the other hand, I, I have to complete a couple more. Because even if I have a majority on color, it doesn't matter if I can't multiply it by anything. So right now I got the majority of orange or yellow. But I got to start finishing stuff off so I can multiply it by. These have to have both the top and the bottom section completed in order to score at the end. Alright, so enough about that. It goes back to me. I'm going to shift. Goes over to Jen. And Jen does not want any of this but she will come over here and finish this guy there we go we got a red so we shift that down and then one plus two is three points and now i'm stuck stuck with all this and i have nowhere to put it but here and i'm gonna have to get knocked down on that track but it happens so there we go but i do get to complete this Alright, discard all this. No bonus. Oops. No bonus for the round tile. But, I did get this completed, so I got something to multiply by. I'll at least have six points at the end. Discard this. So, I get two, four, six, seven points. Goes over to Jen. Or it's actually the end of the round. So we'll discard this and rinse and repeat with the factory. All right, final round. I'm up. Place this in the middle so I don't forget. Uh, so I want blue for the extra point. Got the fiber here. I can finish this off right now. But I think I'll hold off. There's enough out there where I think I can finish this off. Um, Jen's gonna grab two for this. Uh, you know what? Maybe I'll wait. I'll wait on this one. I'll start this one off. Boom. Take them two. Place that in the middle. I grab this and. No, I don't. I just put that in there. Why would I get it? I just put it in there. Alright, so. Um, we come back to this. Get one, two, three, four. Four points. One, two, three, four. And then, like I said, I already got a majority, so it doesn't really matter what color. I just want it finished. Okay, remove all this and discard both that and the tile. And then I get three points. Goes over to Jen. Jen wants to finish this. Because it's a five extra points, and then, you know, she'll finish this. Cascade on down. She would like to get this one done, too this round so either way she's gonna have to shift it all right so that's what she's gonna do where she could get this one done it's only one point yeah now nah, she's gonna shift it back to me i'm gonna work on this blue like i said but actually I'd like to get the red in four points but yeah i'm gonna shift also all right is that what i'm gonna do yeah i'm gonna shift all right goes back to jen Jen, well, she's going to get points, obviously. So, she's going to take these two, shifting the rest in the center, and then completing this one. So, she gets one, two, three, four, five points for the bonus. Discard the tiles. All of the tiles. All of them, on this case, anyway. And then she gets three. Uh, five, seven, eight, ten, eleven points, which will bring her up to fifty-seven. Over to me. I want to work on this blue. Got to work on this blue. Uh, that's what I do.
there's not enough to finish this. Well, let me think about this. There's not enough to finish this. Yeah, I got to do this, Blue. I got to do it. All right, so. I'm going to grab these two. Place them here. Dump the rest in the middle. Back to Jen. Jen could finish this one. You know what? I think that's what she's going to do. It'll be worth three points. So she's going to grab this. Shifting the rest in the center. Back to me. I don't have enough for this. <laughs> oh, I wasn't paying attention. I got to finish this one. All right. I'll come over here. I should have done that the last round. Was not paying attention. I take the first player. Marker. Lose space on the track. But I complete this one. So... I get uh, one, two, four points. Over, oh, and I flipped this. That's not helping me. Over to Jen. <laughs> okay, so Jen, uh, well, she's going to grab these three, finish this guy off. Oh, wait, wait, she can't do that. Uh, she jumped up. Hmm. There's no orange. She can't do this one. Or this one. She could do this one. That's what she'll do. She'll jump up here. And grab these three clear. Uh, or yellow, rather. Ah, wrong one. She'll grab the clear. <laughs> okay, what can I... There's three yellow... Can't do that. I can't do this. I can't finish this, unfortunately. I can't finish any of these. Doesn't make sense. Only thing I'm, uh, I'm gonna shift goes over to Jen. Jen will draw this. Place it here. Shifting them back to me. I don't want them yellows. <laughs> I see what Jen's going for. I'm gonna grab this just to prevent her from doing that. Goes back to Jen. She did not like that. She's going to shift back to the beginning the spot. Comes back to me. So I know Jen's going to take them yellow to finish that off. And I'll come back to me with the blue. That's what I'll do. I'll grab the blue. Okay. Ooh, try not to throw them on the floor. Over to Jen. Like I said, Jen's going to grab them yellow. So she's going to come over here. Now, she placed three of them. She has an additional one left. She's got to discard that and come back down on the track. Losing her 10 points, unfortunately. But she finishes this, which will get her more than 10 points. All right, so discard the rest of these. Flip this over. Not that we really need to. It's the last round. It's actually the last turn of the round after this is done. But she gets three. Six, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen points. Brings her up to seventy. Goes over to me, and unfortunately, I. Oh no, no, no! Wait, I don't have to do that. I'm going to shift over back to Jen. The final turn of the game, and she will place that there. Okay, so that's the end of the game. Let's go into the final scoring. First, we're going to check our players, and we'll get one point for every three unused glass tiles so one two three that's one point two points three points for jen comes over to me and i get one point because i only have five okay then we discard them okay now we're gonna go into the and scoring, I'll start off with Jen. The A side, like I said, we will score depending on the clusters around this uh, symbol here. So here we have two around this symbol here. We get three points. And by we, I mean Jen, but again, it's me. So either one's me. Come down to this wood. We got three of them surrounding this one here. We get an additional six points. Three, six. Okay. Two here, so that's three points. And then three here, so that's six points for a total of eight. So that's the A side done. Come over to me for the B side. Like I said, B side is different. We're going to find a color tile that we have the most of, and then multiply that by the mo the completed palace tiles here. So 
Unfortunately, I only completed fully completed two of them here down on the palace tile, or three of them. So I would multiply either the orange, yellow, or clear, depending on which which one I choose. It really doesn't matter. They're both. They're all three of them are worth or three or value of three all right so i'm going to multiply three by three which will give me nine points so say i choose the orange ones here which has three of them on the board i'm going to then multiply that by the number of completed tiles i did which is three if i would stop knocking tiles off or palace uh glasses i think is what they call them so one two three times one two three is nine I know that was a long way of getting around that. And then now we will take off points depending on where we land on this broken glass section here. So I lost five points. Jen lost 10 points, but she still won by six points. So that was Azul Stained Glass of Sintra. Yeah, that's right. Uh, stay tuned for what I think of the game. Okay, so that was Azul uh, Stained Glass of Sintra. It's a long title. You know, Azul 2. <laughs> you know, Stained Glass. I understand. You know, theming and all. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, so, uh, this is one of them games. I remember playing the original Azul years ago. I remember where I was, who I was playing with. I remember looking at the board and the box, but I do not actually remember how the game played or how I played the game. Um, so this is one of the reasons I'm doing these videos. Um, even though this isn't the exact version of it, it's similar in the mechanics. Um, I went with the stained glass one because it was at the local uh, game store of mine. Um, I didn't get the original because uh, I want to see what the new one did, even though I don't remember the other one. I, I, I remember it kind of being, it didn't leave an impression on me, I'll say that. So, you know, I didn't think of it at the time, um, about it at the time. You know, I just, I figured I'd get the next version of it. Jen was interested in it as well. She heard about it and uh, was curious about it. So this one's kind of new to us. We, I've had a couple weeks now. We played it uh, together about four times, maybe. Um, with a caveat on that, <laughs> um, and then I've played it, uh, probably about eight times or so now, maybe nine, um, uh, and all these games were just two players or me doing two players solo, so I, I can't count for the four players, although I think I, I, I can kind of imagine what it's like. Um, so the game time... It's quick. This is a quick game. Once you, once you know, you know, it, it gets pretty quick. I Where's the box? It's over here. I don't want to dump all this. Uh, I think it was like 40 minutes or a half hour or something like that on the box. Of course not. <laughs> There it is. Yeah, 30 to 45 minutes it says on the box. I, I say that's pretty, you know, two players is pretty quick. Again, depending on the player, if they got AP, it could be a little longer. But I, I can't imagine the full count of four players taking too much longer than that. Um, you know, that 45, maybe an hour. Again, with AP prone players, gamer gamers, you know, a little longer. This is... I would consider it a gateway game. Um, man, maybe not. Maybe a step above. Uh, this is probably going to be unlike anything a new person at a hobby has seen. That whole draft selection and then this, this, uh, flip it over and the double scoring and all that. It, it's, it, it's probably, uh, something that a new player, someone new to a hobby has never encountered. But I think, after seeing it once or twice, you you would get it. You know, a, a new player would get it, um, and probably excel at it once they understand the game. Um, like I said, me and Jen played it four times, I think, maybe five. The first time we played it, Rago, uh, when we got it, um, 
I glanced at the rule book. I didn't actually really read. I was pretty stoned when I was doing it, so I didn't comprehend everything. I was, it, I've been in a lot of pain, a lot of reading and stuff with it back. But um, so I'm not going to count that game at all. We 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 played it close. I screwed up on grabbing from the center. Um, I'll get into that in a minute. Even though I misread it, there's something about that in the rule book I would talk about. Um, so I, I'm not going to count that game. But then we, I really read it. Actually, Jen read it the first day, and she had a hard time with the rule book for some things. But um, came back, and I know I'm playing it right now. Um, may have forgotten a rule while I was playing again. Don't go by my strategy. Or, do what I do, do what I say, <laughs> you know, that type of thing. Um, so let me get back to it. It's an abstract game, as is old, the original was, and there's a couple more of them, uh, I think two or three of them now, maybe four. Um, they're all abstract games, but this one, the theme really kind of fits the, what they're doing here. You know, it's the stained glass thing does... Uh, is it... Sintra, I always want to call it something else. Sintra is in Portugal, and I believe they do a lot of stained glass there. I don't know. Um, it's actually something I always wanted to try, but uh, after working on the trains, I, you know, I work with some regular glass, and it's uh, not fun to get cut up a lot. Uh, but there's also a lot of lead in stained glass, the old stained glass. I don't know about the new one with the glazers, what they glaze it with now. But anyway, the theme, I think, fits this. You know, we got these tiles that are... Uh, sort of looks like stained glass when they're up there you know it looks like a stained glass window especially with the artwork on the board um the uh the components themselves they're nice you know i like them um, i i like that they could have used just the regular um cardboard tokens to, to represent the glass but they actually use these guys here uh, the acrylic tokens which for me help because i have issues with my hands i have neurological stuff that my hands lock up and i have a hard time grabbing stuff sometimes um but so that helps out with that um so i, I do like the components a lot the uh the insert is plastic i'm not really thrilled about plastic inserts i never was but it is nicely organized let me pull that back in here it is nicely organized for what's in the game now if there's ever expansions as with all of these plastic uh, inserts you're going to have room when you're going to probably hit the toss it or dump stuff underneath it or figure something out but it does have room for everything that comes in the box naturally and this uh, this glass tower is a cool addition too because it fits in there and you, you know you could just dump it all in the bag the next time you're getting ready to play this they actually didn't you could have just dumped these off of the side of the table they didn't actually have to include it i thought it was cool that they did nice little touch um and the bags good quality uh, sometimes you get them ones i got semi big hands they're not huge but i have a hard time reaching into some of the bags this is a nice size one to get your hands in there if you got big poles um uh, the rule book i'm gonna get into that um this is one of them accordion ones i i never did like them that this these ones that fold out aren't quite as bad as the ones that fold out like the boards you know them, them quad fold ones they really bother me because you got a sheet this big in front of you these I don't like because, you know, it's funny with looking up rules and all that. That's a personal preference. The problem I did have with the rule book itself is um, the explanation of this, and I'll get back into that in a second. But also, like I was saying, when we read it, they highlighted certain words. It, um, it says, pick all pain pieces of one color. But they have it separated like that, <laughs> where if you're just looking at a glance, you're looking for a highlighted thing to refresh yourself on rules. You'll take. I took it as you know, you take all one all of the pieces in the center. Um, when I was reading it, for some reason, again, I was high when I read it. But <laughs> I, I, that's how we played the game, first game. Um, and then looking back on it, when I was a little more straight minded. You know, it did. It could just be me, but that they they should have highlighted or just worded it so it said all of one color right next to each other. You know, instead of breaking it up like that. 
And then um, this this broken glass thing here. They they put it at the end of the game, and they kind of dropped it down as like an example. Which in the game, the, the, I think it should have been explained a little clearer and not listed like an example like this. Because whenever I see something off to the side like this, it's just. It's not a main rule to me. In my mind, it's an example. And, and this thing is a main rule, but they just they worded it weird and showed it strangely. Um, but in the rule book, they waited till the end to explain how this works, where I, I feel as though they should have done it as, you know, after you take the first player, you, you drop it down. And then if you ever hit 18, you would lose points during the game and then move it back up to the top of the track where they explain that at the end of the game. So some keep, people could have took it like, all right, well, during the game, it just drops down 18 and it sits there, you know, or something like that, where it could, it could actually accumulate. You get more than 18 lost throughout the game. Um, but other than that, that them, them couple of simple qualms, that's, that's you know, I wanted the preference of mine that, that folding out of the, the rule book. That, that's minor. Um, getting back to the components. I do like that they they figure something out for colorblind people with this game. Um, I've played with a couple. Jamie was uh, is, is uh, colorblind between pink and gray. At least that I know. Which is weird because he, he was a web designer. You know. Uh, so he actually said he thought he was doing a gray page. It turned out to be pink. <laughs> um, uh, and um, I know there's others like, I think it's green and blues or red and greens or something like that. I'm not colorblind, so I don't know. Um, but I, I think it's cool that they do substitute for for that handicap. You know, they, they, they figure a way around the handicap. I don't know about the uh, marks on the center. These, uh, you know, um, but... As long as I think if somebody's helping a blind, a colorblind person out, stacking them, they'd be all right. I don't, I don't know if a colorblind person would be able to tell with this. Uh, I don't know if they could see it clear without being able to see the color. Yeah, I don't know. Even, even without that, I was sitting here with Jen, and I, I mentioned that there, there was a, a situation where it was like a red and orange and a red tile, and the orange one was sandwiched between, and they were standing up like this and I was looking at him and I couldn't tell clearly that you know the red and the orange I, they it all looked like red to me in certain lights yeah um so I, I think it's cool that they, they thought of that um uh, something they really didn't have to uh the board game ministry's gotten better with that but for a while if you were colorblind you were on your own you know the game developers weren't or or the publishers weren't going to try and help you out it's I didn't think of it, I think, you know. Um, but, like I said, this hobby is kind of accommodating for the most part, you know. So there's that. They try to accommodate for people. If they don't see something, you know, comes to their attention. They try to fix it. Um, this this is, a, I do like this game. Uh, Jen does too. After, you know, we played it right, and then she whooped me pretty badly the second or third time. Um I like the, uh, this I do like, this broken glass track. I, I do like, even though it's kind of weird on there, um, because it, it brings more attention. Like, if I grab that first player marker this round, I'm going to have to lose points. Or if, uh, you know, what's in there, you know, there's, there's, uh, only a couple turns left. What's, what's in the center? Because I don't want to get stuck with what, what's in the center. It'll drop me down on, on points eventually. You know, so there's a whole mitigation to that and, and what you're doing. I do like that. Um, the, uh, the the bonus uh, tile thing, I, I, I like that. Bring some randomization to the game. Um, the, uh, the scoring at the end, I do like that. There's a couple different ways. I, I don't think I really explored both of them enough to really see which one's better or, to me, in my opinion. Um, like I said, I've played maybe eight times, and I think I played about the same on each side. Um, well, a little more on the A side because I've been playing both when I'm by myself. Um, 
but it's interesting. It's another thing where, you know, uh, most of the time when people are playing board games with each other, they're not really worried about what the other person's doing. You know, so this is a way to kind of sneak up on points at the end. Or if you're a hawk, you can actually watch what people's doing and calculate what you want to do at the end and beat them. You know, I, I like that. This gives that, you know, variety. Instead of what's actually on the board, at the end there's going to be stuff, you know, to kind of a big surprise, you know. Unless you're the player that's going to sit there and math everything out, which I have played with people like that. I, I can't do that. I'm sure if you want to, you can figure out how many or how many tiles are going into this all the time, how many's left, and all that. I am not that type of player. <laughs> all right. Um. What was it? Oh, the scoring. Yes, and the same with the glass, the broken glass. At the end, it's a little bit. You know, it's it's there. Everybody can see, it, kind of calculate it. But um, there's that. Um. Speaking of that playing on your own, there is a ton of player interaction in this. I do like that. It can be a very, very mean game. Um, uh, cause there's that whole thing, like, I know what you need. I'm going to grab it out of center before you can get it, or I'm going to grab it off of this. So you have to grab it at center and then placing it, you get negative points or something like that. I, I, there is a ton of player interaction in this. I do like that in games. Power lines. It's probably the only what I call solo group game that I like where you're just, you're in your own world. You know, there's no player interaction. I, I think that's about my favorite type of that game for some reason. Still, I, I probably the puzzle end of it, but usually I like player interaction of some sort. It, you know, it's a hobby. It's, you know, the whole hobby is player interaction. I guess what we did there. So they sit at the table doing their own thing. Yeah. Anyway. I do like that there's a ton of it. It can be very mean, though. So if your player doesn't like a ton of mean stuff, take that stuff. You might not like this game. Um, it's not one of them, like, I destroy your city halfway through the game and you're screwed the rest of the game. But it's like, oh, I could chip at you. <laughs> you know, I could sneak in there and thwart your plans <laughs> type of thing. Um, not devastatingly, I don't think. Eh, maybe. But, you know, it's one of them games. Uh, I do like the randomization of what comes out every round, and also um, I do like that if you want to plan it out a little bit, you the uh, the pattern tile show you what's on the other side. Yeah, uh, so there's this, there's kind of a balance between planning and randomization in this game that I, I enjoy, as in with most games. Um, so this is going to stay in the collection for now, I think. Um, I'm going to explore it a little bit more, see if it'll you know, permanently or not, see if Jen really likes it or not. That's that's what it comes down to. Uh, but something you would like to play, go check it out on your own, BGG. Um, like I said, there's other ones of these. I know there's a, a chocolate something, I think is the newest one, and then uh, Patio? No. It had something to do with summer, if I remember right, or spring or something. I can't remember, but if something you want to check out, go ahead, BGG online. That's it for now. Get gaming, have fun, see you next time. Get me out!